creativity always comes as a surprise to us. If it didn't, we wouldn't need it. And uh, socialism would work. That's my conclusion. And, uh, and creativity is at the very heart of the economy. And, uh, and creativity goes beyond freedom of choice. It's uh, it, uh, what uh, uh, entrepreneurs and inventors do is not merely select from a series of options, as even Paul Romer's view of entrepreneurship as the selection of uh, new combinations of chemical elements, reassembling chemical elements. Uh, and all these uh, theories of economics, including even libertarian theories, there's the idea that somehow what an entrepreneur does is uh, manipulate uh, his immediate resources uh, supplied, by, uh, supplied to him by the environment. Uh, I find that uh, this error arises frequently in uh, telecom policy. I mean, all around here uh, in Washington, we hear about the electromagnetic spectrum as being a great natural resource and as being uh, like beachfront property. They don't make it anymore. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is somehow regarded as a great natural resource that government has some claim upon or that government can actually preserve or protect or that, uh, that uh, and it's really the foundation for most of what the FCC does. And yet, uh, in no significant sense, is uh, the electromagnetic spectrum a natural resource or uh, resemble beachfront property. It's, uh, it's a physical concept that reflects physical law, but uh, all, it, as a technology and as a business and as a service, it is entirely created by human ingenuity and creativity. Uh, the, from the invention of the maser and the laser and microwave oscillators and, and uh, phased array antennas and photo detectors and the whole array of creativity uh, that um, makes possible what we call of, as the electromagnetic spectrum is a manifestation not of choices of, in an environment, but of innate human creativity, and uh, which always comes as a surprise to us. Now, uh, from the foundation of economics, including Adam Smith, uh, who was mimicking the great system of the world of uh, Isaac Newton, Economists have focused on uh, a kind of uh, physics envy. They've uh, wanted to uh, produce a science that uh, is uh, predictable uh, and, uh, and, and, and intrinsically deterministic. The mathematics that they use is a determinist mathematics. And, uh, image of uh, the human being that is um, at the core of these models of the economy, almost all novel models of the economy, is as a, 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 a optimizing agent. It really springs from bi behavioral psychology. It's the last survival the last survival of the Skinner box is really homo economicus uh, at the center of, uh, of all economic models. It's, uh, it's the um, economic man as a function of his environment. And, and uh, this model actually uh, we adopted pretty fully in supply side economics. So there would you know, we, you know uh, it's the stimulus and response model that explains why 
lower tax rates uh, produce higher revenues. And, and, uh, this, and so there was really a conflict at the heart of, of wealth and poverty and the theory of economics that I expounded there. And that was between the, uh, this homo economicus making optimizing uh, decisions or as reassembling chemical elements in the grander uh, vision of uh, Paul Romer or in the Austrian scheme, often as an arbitrageur or somehow an economy uh, uh, opportunity scout, which is Israel Kirzner's better definition. But all these uh, make the entrepreneur and the human agent as somehow a function of, of larger forces of his environment. He's not the uh, uh, the source and creator in the image of his creator, he is the uh, he is a, a function, and uh, and and so uh, the conflict in wealth and poverty was between this Homo economicus and the heroic creative entrepreneur uh, that uh, is uh, bringing f true novelties into the world, and uh, and that. Uh, that really is the, uh, the reason why when I started studying information theory, which I've been doing for pretty much 20 years, uh, it increasingly became clear that this was a complete economic theory because uh, Shannon's uh, fundamental insight is that uh, information is surprise. And, uh, and uh, that uh, information is not the product of a predictable process. It's not an effect or manifestation of order. It is the opposite of order. It is uh, surprisal, entropy, unexpected bits. And so it seemed to me that since Shannon's definition of information uh, made uh, freedom not only a condition of, uh, of uh, information and creativity, but also the very criterion of, uh, of information. And, uh, and, and I believe that this uh, model of information that comes from uh, uh, the, the mathematics of, uh, of uh, of, uh, of, uh, best expounded now by uh, Chaitin, um, a former uh, IBM researcher who is uh, really one of the world's great mathematicians and the true follower of uh, Shannon, and, uh, but also von Neumann and Gödel and Turing, all these uh, uh, founders of 20th century mathematics, mathematics really uh, created the foundations also for a 21st century economics and an economics of knowledge and surprisal and entropy mm -hmm. rather than of, uh, of predictability and equilibrium and arbitrage and, uh, and and it really does allow us to say that an economy is a knowledge system, not chiefly an incentive system.